Welcome to trimester two, day two of calculus. Today we get to learn a new rule for derivatives and it states if f of x is a to the x then the derivative is natural log of a times a to the x. This is super, super, super helpful. So keeping that in mind, if I gave you f of x is equal to two to the x, what is f prime of x? Well, in this case, the a value is two. That's your a value. So it's gonna be ln of two times two to the x. That's it. What about over here? What happens if it's five times four to the x? Well, keep in mind the five is just along for the ride. It's just out front. It doesn't change anything. It just sticks out front. So f prime of x is gonna be five times. Well, what's the derivative of four to the x? Well, that's gonna be ln four times four to the x. Exciting. What about this big long thing right here? Well, we have to do it piece by piece. What's the derivative of pi squared? Well, that's a constant. What's the derivative of a constant? Well, that's going to be da, 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 zero. What about pi to the x? Well, that's gonna be ln pi times pi to the x. What about negative x squared? Well, you know the derivative of negative x squared, that's minus two x. And then what about three over x squared? Well, three over x squared is three x to the negative two. What's the derivative there? Well, you bring the negative two to the front and multiply it times three, so it's minus six x. And what's negative two minus one? That's negative three. And then what about this last one right here? Negative eight, eight to the one plus x. Well, it's gonna be minus, well, that's right, it's gonna be ln eight times eight to the one plus x, that's it. That's all it is. So again, it's a constant, our new rule twice, and then two things we already knew about. We already knew about it. Super cool, super, super cool. What about f of x equals e to the x? Well, the derivative of this is just going to be ln of e times e to the x. And if you check this on your calculator, what is ln of e? That's actually one. So f prime of x is equal to e to the x which is pretty cool. So if f of x is e to the x, the derivative is itself. So find the equation of the line tangent to that function at x equals two. We're gonna do this exactly. We're not estimating, we're doing it exactly. So again, if we're finding the equation of a line, we need a point and we need a slope. Let's do the point first. So we have, we're tangent to y equals three to the x and we're looking at at x equals two. So if we want the point, it's two comma whatever the function is when x is two. Well, what is f of two? Well, that's three squared, which is nine. So nine goes right there. So do we have a point? Mm-hmm. It's two comma nine. What's the slope going to be? Well, to find the slope, we need the derivative. So in this case, f of x is three to the x. Our derivative is going to be ln three times three to the x. Notice the parentheses. So if that's the derivative, what is the derivative at x equals two? So f prime of two is equal to ln three times three to the two. So you could say that's nine times ln three. So now we have a point and a slope. We can write the equation of a line because we know y minus y one equals m times x minus x one is a perfectly valid way to write the equation of a line. So it's gonna be y minus nine ln three, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> y minus nine is equal to our slope, which is nine ln three times x minus two. You can stop right there. That is the exact tangent line. So now let's talk about your next rule. And this is the product rule, the product rule, which is what you do when you, have, when you are taking the derivative of two functions that are multiplied together. Keep in mind that dy dx, that's just a fancy way of saying f prime of x. So if y is the product of f of x and g of x, then the derivative of that product will be f of x times the derivative of g plus g of x times the derivative of f. So what does that mean in practice? What does that mean in practice? So if you have this right here, you have two functions multiplied together, x cubed and four to the x. That means that y prime, you do the derivative of the first. So what's the derivative of x cubed? That's three x squared, and you multiply it times four to the x. 
and then you add to it x cubed times the derivative of 4 to the x. What is the derivative of 4 to the x? Well, that's ln 4 times 4 to the x. So this is the whole thing right here. Keep in mind, there's the function and its derivative. There's the function and its derivative right there. And then the pieces out front are the is the other function, the other function. So if we wanted to use, do this one using the product rule, our first function is 5, and our second function is e to the x. So our derivative will be the first times the derivative of the second. But what's the derivative of 5? Well, the derivative of 5 is 0 times e to the x. Well, what's 0 times e to the x? That's 0. y prime is equal to 5 times e to the x, which matches what we know already, because what is the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. So let's say I gave you f of x is equal to x to the fourth times 5 of x, and I ask you for f prime of x. What's the derivative of the first function? 4x cubed. And what is the second function? 5 to the x. And then you have the first function times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of 5 to the x? ln 5 times 5 to the x, and you're done. So again, you're pairing up the function and its derivative times the other piece function and the derivative of the function times the other piece. So you have 5 to the x, carry down there, and x to the fourth, carry down right there. So the product rule generally makes things bigger in a way. So the second rule we have right here, the second rule is the quotient rule. And that's what happens when you have two functions that are divided by one another. Sometimes we've gotten around this by simplifying f of x over g of x, but sometimes you can't really do that. To answer your first question, yes, you have to memorize this right here. And the easy way to remember that is this way, low d high minus high d low over low squared. I did a pretty bad job of writing low right there. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. And when I say high and low, I mean the high function is f and the low function is g and d means derivative. So that's a shorthand way of saying if the upper function is f and the lower function is g, that's going to be g of x times the derivative of the top minus the upper function times the derivative of the bottom over low function, which is g of x squared. So these are the same. These are all the same. But I love to memorize it this way right here. Low d high over high d low over low squared. So if I were to do this one here, this is our high function, and this is our low function. And again, that was high d low minus low. Oh, did I write it backwards? It's low d high. It's low d high. I wrote it backwards. So be careful. It's low d high minus high d low over low squared. So what's our low function? x squared. What's the derivative of the top? Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x minus high d low. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. And you're dividing it by x squared squared. So for now, I just want you to stop right there. You don't have to simplify. That would be the derivative. So again, the phrase is low d high minus high d low. This one right here. Yay. Let's do it on that one. Our low function in this case is... So it's low, so x cubed plus 1 d high. What's the derivative up here? 10x, low d high, minus high. And what's the derivative of the bottom? Low d high minus high d low. The derivative of x cubed plus 1 is 3x squared, all over x cubed plus 1 squared. Again, you can just stop right here for now. What about this one right here? So again, it's low d high, so low, so y prime will equal low, low function d high, the derivative of the top is zero, minus high d low. What's the derivative of one plus e to the x? That's e to the x, all over the bot low squared, so one plus e to the x squared. And you can simplify this one a little bit because that's just gonna be zero. So you end up with negative e to the x over one plus e to the x squared. Exciting. So this is seemingly like a ton to remember, but we're going to practice this a whole bunch. Again, product rule, and then please remember low d high minus high d low over low squared.